We're now moving into the buffer lab. The first thing that you need to do is to get 100 milliliters of graduated water or of wa <laughs> distilled water into the graduated cylinder. Uh, you can go ahead and add this to a beaker, like so. You're going to need 2.0 grams of this potassium hydrogen phthalate, uh, salt crystals, which is known as KHP. You get them on a uh, sheet of weighing paper like so, and add this into your water like so. And this, just stir this around to make sure that the KHP is properly dissolved. Once your KHP is thoroughly dissolved, like so, uh, we're going to need to put an equal amount into two, these two Erlenmeyer flasks based on their shape. You can tell what type of flask they are. Um, so the best way to do this is to pour it back into the graduated cylinder. And since you have 100 milliliters of this, uh, you just need to put 50 milliliters into each of the flasks. You want to get it about as close to 50 as you need to. I just need to pour some back into the graduated cylinder. That's okay. So there's our 50 milliliters into there and our 50 milliliters into the other one as well. Then in one of the two Erlenmeyer flasks with the equal amounts of the KHP solution in it, uh, we need to add a few drops of phenolphthalein's um, indicator. Uh, so here is our phenolphthalein indicator uh, and a pipette that we can use to get a few drops into it uh, and put it to one, two, three, four drops into our solution there. Have the four drops of phenolphthalein in there. You should be able to stir around the Erlenmeyer flask like this without splashing anything on the sides due to the shape of the flask. For the next step of this lab, we're going to need a burette like this one. Um, they're really tall, uh, and this one holds about 50, yeah, 50 milliliters of uh, what you need it to. Uh, we're going to be filling this with 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide, um, which is a little tricky to do. So what we're going to use is we're going to use uh, the funnel to get it in there properly because the head of the burette is so small. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Um, it's going to be hard for me to show, so I will just do it. And then we'll be putting it back into the um, acid-based titration uh, stand holder, the burette holder. We then should be able to take uh, this solution with the phenolphthalein drops in it uh, and add small amounts of this strong base until we see a faint light pink color persist persist in our Erlenmeyer flask. The color will come because it, once again we used the uh, we used the phenolphthalein um, indicator. So the color will exist once it becomes uh, once we add the appropriate amount of sodium hydroxide to it. Um, you want to go little bits at a time so as to not go too far. Okay, so there, after the first a little bit of sodium hydroxide added, there is not a uh, clear pink, or there's not a faint light pink color yet uh, persisting in our flask. So we'll add a little bit more. Again, hopefully you can see uh, it's still clear, so we're not quite there yet. As you get closer and closer, you'll notice that it does turn pink for a split second, but then as you continue to mix it, uh, the pink goes away, the pink dies off. The pink will want to stay for longer and longer until you get closer. Eventually, you just want the pink to stay uh, forever. Uh, you can see we're getting much, much closer. 
So we're going only little bits at a time here. So there you go. Hopefully you can see how this isn't going to fade uh, anymore. It's as still it's at the appropriate light pink sort of color that we want it to be at. Um, again, as you get closer and closer, just you want to slow down um, so as to not go too far. But that's about what you want it to look like. Uh, so then we'll take this solution, which we just neutralized with the base, um, KHP being the acid in this reaction, with the base, uh, sodium hydroxide, and we'll add it to the other 50 milliliters uh, of the KHP that we had separated earlier, forming our buffered solution. You'll notice since we added more acid, or since it now has a higher concentration of acid than it did before, how it's gone back to clear, but we know it's buffered because uh, it has the appropriate amount of sodium hydroxide in it as well. Once your solution is made, what you want to do is you want to get a you'll want to get a pH probe uh, properly hooked up to your computer, uh, like it is here. Uh, then we'll be taking our KHP solution here, and we'll be adding 25 milliliters or so in each one of these two beakers. Uh, so here we go into the first beaker. Well, so, uh, just like that, we'll be testing different things in each of these um, beakers. Into the one on the left, we'll be adding some hydrochloric acid. And the one on the right, uh, we'll be adding uh, some strong base sodium hydroxide. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll take our properly rinsed pH probe, uh, and we will put it into the beaker on the left. The uh, beaker on the left filled with our KHP buffer solution. Uh, so you can see here that pH level is stabilizing. The pH seen on the bottom right of the screen will be the baseline pH level for the KHP buffer solution. Uh, so once we have that accurately recorded, we'll be adding a few drops, uh, about five drops of our strong acid, hydrochloric acid, using this pipette. We will add five drops or so uh, to three, four, five, uh, and then we'll stir this around. We'll then put our pH probe back into it after the five or so drops have been added uh, and stirred. And let this stand for about two to three minutes in the solution. We'll try to notice any changes in pH during these two to three minutes on the bottom right corner of our screen. The pH level is stabilizing. Similarly, into the beaker on the right, uh, this is also the KHP buffer solution. We'll be adding 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide to this one, uh, about five drops of this as well. So two, three, four, five. The five drops have been added. So now we want to stir it like so. And we'll put the pH probe in there and let it stand. Again, because this is a buffer, we expect to see very little changes on the bottom right hand of our screen in pH levels, even after addition of a strong base. And compare the results of what happened with the buffer solution to the results of what will happen when we use regular distilled water. So I've switched the beakers out for beakers of distilled water. Again, we'll be adding five or so drops of uh, 0.1 molar HCl. And then using the pH electrode, like so, we'll put it in there and see 
what has changed, if the pH level has changed more drastically in this instance, uh, now that we're not using the pH or the buffer. Hopefully you can notice a much more significant change in pH uh, from the pH of the water to the pH after addition of the hydrochloric acid. And then we'll repeat again with the uh, sodium hydroxide. Three, four, five. Move the pH probe from the distilled water into the beaker with the sodium hydroxide. And then compare the differences in pH levels. Again, you should hopefully see more drastic changes this time around in pH levels. So that will wrap up the AP Chemistry Buffer Lab, uh, and hopefully that helps you figure out how to prepare buffers like we did in this lab, as well as understand what they are and what these pH buffers really do for us.